Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. Aaron is back. He Yay. is with us today, feeling so much better. Oh man, that was the worst. It really was. Like, I want to say it's one of the worst sicknesses I've ever had. Mm -hmm. I was out. Yeah, that's the worst I've ever seen you. Um, 17 years. You know what was funny? It wasn't funny, but like, I lost the will to do anything. <laughs> like, to get out. I've, I don't think I've ever really felt that when you're sick and you just like... You have no willpower to get out of bed mm. or do anything. Like you're hungry, but it's like I, I can't expend the energy to go get something to eat. And mm -hmm. you brought me food sometimes, but mm -hmm. like, blah. Yeah, it's the worst. And poor Bethany, she's got it today. That sucks. I mean, it's just been running rampant Paul through our it. area. Paul got he it. He got it around the same time I did. Yep. And then Bethany's and whole family had it. It doesn't test positive for anything. No. Uh, like I went in, I got some antibiotics mm -hmm. and the doctor was like, yeah, look, a lot of people are coming in. They're not testing positive for COVID or RSV. Is that what it is? I don't know. Or, they they ran tests for me too. Yeah. Not, it's yeah, not flu. It's just mm -hmm. nothing. Like they don't know what it is. Right. And they're like, here's some antibiotics. Hope you get better. Well, he said something about how like a lot, maybe the virus was coupled, coupled with the bacteria that was making it hang like hanging around longer. longer. So both Aaron and I had to end up doing antibiotics. Well, you had like a sinus infection. Yeah. Like, um, I could be wrong about this, but doesn't like things turn into a sinus infection. It's not like you don't like get a sinus infection from someone else, right? You get a virus from someone and that turns know. into a sinus infection. I don't know how that works, but you guys could hear it. Like I was still, yeah. <laughs> I was still filming and just like, uh, the whole time. Do we skip when we skip some birthdays? Yeah. And that was I'm like, I'm really surprised saving you grace. didn't skip more days. Working. I feel better working. Yeah. Yeah. Like not I just want to sweat it out. Yeah. <laughs> sort of a situation. Didn't work very well. Okay. Other than that, we've had beautiful weather. We always have to talk about the weather because that's what like... Gardeners care about, I yeah, guess. I don't it's know. It's been beautiful. Yesterday was like, what, 54? Today's 52. It is gray and like drizzly outside right now, but we're supposed to have a little break. Like a low of 44 though. Yeah. And our 10 day looks great. We've got a couple of freeze freezes, but not super low freeze. Temperature. So I've been cleaning stuff out and just enjoying enjoying it yeah. so much. Um, it always feels like a gift when I can get out earlier, and it doesn't adversely affect my plants at all. It never has. Um, yeah, I used to clean out in the fall and just let them let it be. Like yeah. even with heavy, I didn't mulch or anything. Things yeah, just survive. I, those types of things. I think you know maybe for different climates where it's a little more extreme, it matters sure. more. Mm -hmm. But I don't. We're just not quite extreme enough. We get extreme heat, so things yeah. will die in the summer. Right. But we don't typically get extreme cold. Right. And, and a lot of times when we do get the cold, it feels like it's after we've had some snow. Mm -hmm. And so everything kind of has sometimes like an insulation layer. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. The first video was make a cut flower arrangement with me. So I had intended on potting up more houseplants, which I still need to do. Maybe today is, would be a good day for that. I don't know uh, when it's rainy outside, but... I went to the grocery store for just a couple of things and they had just received, they received their new flower orders on Tuesdays. Um, and so I, yeah, I think it was a Tuesday. They had fresh, beautiful things and it just, uh, I couldn't help myself. So I ended up with a bucket full of flowers and decided just to sit down and walk you through a flower arrangement building session. <laughs> Not really a tutorial. I don't know. I, I don't feel like, like well-versed enough in floral arranging to give any kind of hardcore lessons. Sure. It's like you just kind of try and sometimes it works out <laughs> and looks pretty. Um, user said, how do you change the water in such a large arrangement? Arrangement. I'd never change water in arrangements <laughs> ever. It's one thing I hate about cut flower arrangements. I almost, I was telling Erin this the other day, like I, d I don't know that cut flower gardening, like the gardening part is my lane, but the cut flower part doesn't really feel like it because I actually don't enjoy the maintenance part of cut flower arrangements at all. In fact, they like let, I let them die and then they sit for months yeah. <laughs> on the surface, just dropping petals. And like, I just ignore it because I don't want that kind of maintenance in the house. I grow, grow the stuff out there because I enjoy watching it grow and I yeah. enjoy looking at it outside. That is what fills me. It's sure. not the actual cutting and arranging for me. I do, do like li to do yeah, that. You like to do that. Yeah. But not, um, not, well, you don't like to do any one thing too much. Right. I like to like dabble yeah. a little bit in a lot of Which things. Which is good. Yeah. But that's when it gets hard. Like, you know, you plant dahlias to cut. 
I'm yeah. like, I don't want to cut any of them. They're just so pretty sitting out there. And right. that's filling me up with so much joy. And same with their roses and stuff. I just want to let them sit there because they last longer. You're like, thank you, usually. Jesus, for the thrips. I know. <laughs> so I can't give I know. <laughs> Last year was like, oh, I just loved it. Didn't want to give away any flowers because I didn't want to give away thrips with them. And it might be another year like that while we still work with biological controls, you know, releasing more predatory mites. Um, and You're out there like releasing some thrips as well. <laughs> I know. It just, it was so nice because I didn't feel any kind of pressure yeah. to give away because well, when you, you do feel pressure anyway, you, you should know just what, like, though? live I know. your life, live your life how you want to live it. And if you enjoy looking at your cut flower garden, but yeah. not cutting it, mm -hmm. that should be fine. Yeah. But there's so many people who would say, or a few, maybe it's a, a loud minority who would say it's wasteful to grow things and not give it away, which you know, I think is such baloney. Those bologna. people that mm. they just need, they need to stick in their lane Yeah. in the same way you know, you can stick in yours. Don't do tell you me want. what to do with my flowers. It <laughs> <laughs> seems so like arbitrary right. in the grand scheme of things. But anyway, I just love growing stuff. It's just, it fills me up and makes me so excited. I'm so excited for this year. I don't know why. Yeah, it'll be, just, it's going to be good. Yeah, it's going to be a good year. Um, Lori said, I'm curious, are there flowers slash fillers that are toxic, toxic to one another and shouldn't be in the same arrangement, meaning they would wilt faster? The only thing I've heard that of is daffodils. Uh, oftentimes you want to process those, I guess. I don't. Um, but you cut daffodils and you set them in their own bucket of water and there's like a sap inside the stems that the water will draw out. And I think you leave them in there for like an hour or two and then you can use them in arrangement with other things. I've... I've never done that. I've never conditioned da uh, daffodils, and I'm sure it is a thing because everybody talks about it, but I've never had my arrangements. Now, this is coming from somebody who won't s switch water. I'll top up the arrangements, but I won't switch up the water. But I, if I get like a good week, 10 days out of an arrangement, like that I feel like is pretty good, like on the better end. Remember of. there was that one company that uh, sold... Um like the bottom would unscrew yeah. to where you could uh, change the water out. You would just put it over the sink, unscrew it. So all your flowers would stay up top and you would be holding on to like a collar around yeah, all the flowers. I should, um, but the thing is, I think what it was is they just had, you know, predictably modern designs because yeah. that's probably what sells. And well, it was plastic too. So it's hard to make something that was Yeah, you're like probably not going to have a glass, like, you know... That would vase. be really cool, though. I wonder if you could do that with glass. I don't know. And and the shape of it. It was like a traditional, like, whoop. You know, it was like very skinny neck. So it was like yeah. for one of those classic, like, three roses with some baby's breath sort of situation. Right. And I like kind of wider vessels. Sure. So I can get, like, big branches and things yeah, in there. Yeah, I wonder if, uh, if you could work with them, though, to create better looking vases i don't know it's such, it's a, not better. such it's just a cool concept modern is just not your thing like no. you're just not into modern designs yeah i can appreciate it though sometimes it's nice to look at something clean yeah. i don't want it to look sterile but i like the clean line sometimes um like when we go to a hotel that's got kind of that modern mm -hmm. vibe it's kind of fun to be in that environment sure. I, I mean i wouldn't want to live it in it in my own home um but i, I don't know i like my, i like having stuff yeah. around you're more eclectic yeah um, Lori said, I don't live in your area, but what grocery store do you go to where you get such gorgeous flowers? It's a chain in, uh, is it the Pacific Northwest? Albertsons is yeah. the name of the store. Um, and yeah, there's several of them in our I think, area. Um, Albertsons and isn't Safeway, like Albertsons bought Safeway or Safeway bought Albertsons something. I don't, I, don't I want to say they're the same now. Are they? I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's the grocery store town. closest to our house. So it's the one that I go to the most. Um, LS said, I really gleaned some new tips from this. Thank you. I'm happy to hear that. Uh, what kind of vacuum is that? Do you recommend it? Looks like a blower. It is a DeWalt battery operated vacuum. Uh, when the hopper is empty and the filter has been cleaned, it does work pretty well. Um, it gets junked up pretty fast because I'm doing really dirty things in there. And so what? I just think like every time you get the Dyson out in our house, you're like, this thing doesn't suck at all. And it's like every time I grab it, it's always plugged. Like without fail. But it fail. gives you an alert if it needs attention. The Dyson no, does. No, it doesn't. It does sometimes, but it doesn't do it. It doesn't alert you I, all the time. I tend to it if it gives me an alert. <laughs> Dysons are kind of junk though, in a, in a way. They don't pick up big chunks. Not, and I'm not talking like a, like a goldfish cracker. I want a vacuum that can pick yeah. up at least a goldfish cracker. And Dysons just don't do it. Older models do. The model we have in here, I don't even know what it is. It's the very first one we ever bought. Yeah. They're better than the newer ones to me. 
I don't know. I think that they suck just fine as long as the filter is clean and the pathway. Do they suck up big chunks for you? Heck you have yeah. to you have to go uh, beside them. You em, always go after me. You, I get done vacuuming yeah. and you're like, Aaron, have you done nothing? And I'm like, I, just, I did the whole thing. You do a great job. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it really is a convenient vacuum because it collapses down small enough to go underneath the sink. It runs with the same batteries that all of our other power tools run with. Um, and if we need to do big jobs in there, we'll get the shop back out. But I think that kind of goes for any big job where you've got larger items to yeah. suck up. Larger than a goldfish cracker. <laughs> Uh, Vanessa said, another wonderful video. Thank you for that. What can you put in the vase instead of floral food? We don't have those little packs here. You can order it online. You can order liquid flower food on Amazon. Um, and I like to have that around. In fact, I think I have a bottle out in the flower shed. Um, I should check on it, though. Freezes in there, mm. probably. It did get down to what? Zero? No, negative six. Negative six. Yeah, it froze in there, I'm sure. Yeah. I, don't, I probably should order some new stuff. Heather Bright said, uh, could you please let us know how long the artichoke leaves hold up in the weekly recap video? They held up until I actually tossed, I've tossed the arrangement since we, um, we made that video. And the artichoke leaves still looked really good when the, everything else was done. Sandy said, what a beautiful piano room. Where was the Mahonia shrub? I don't remember you ever speaking about Mahonia before. It's underneath our weeping willow tree that has the big Hebe statue which I'm going to look into that. Is that Hebe? Because Henry Studio, where that, that um, statue came from initially, it was left here by the previous owners. It came with the house, and I love it. Um, but they po reposted one of my pictures and said it was a Persephone statue. Yeah, I saw that. And I was like, am I getting, do I have it wrong this whole time? So I need to look into that. Maybe it's Persephone. Maybe, it could Maybe be. Maybe the other one's Hebe. Yeah, anyway. Uh, Mahonia in our area does really well in a shaded location as well as a full sun location, uh, right where it's at. I think it might be one of the smaller, like the Repens. Is that how you say Mahonia rep Repens? Um, just a shorter, more kind of ground covery sort. Either that or it's uh, just reacting to the deeper shade and it's staying a lot smaller, but it always looks beautiful right where it's at. I planted a Mahonia Repens by the pond. I'm excited to see how that does. Uh, Debbie? Oh, did they change it? It says Hebe now. Oh, does it? Somebody, it does. Okay. I wonder, you know, it is like a silhouette. So maybe yeah. they saw the photo and just, and just assumed it was okay. Persephone. Well, that, I'm glad you saw it too because I thought, oh my gosh, I've been saying that for seven years and no one's told me. Was there any comments about it? Somebody said Hebe? Question mark. And they said, you're right. Okay. So... Uh, Debbie said, you were sitting on the piano bench, you uh, playing a sweet song on the piano would have been the icing on the cake. I love your piano playing. Maybe soon, please. Uh, you know what? When I placed that arrangement, Samantha was asleep and her room is like right above that. So even if I was going to play the piano, which I probably wouldn't have, um, it would have been too loud. Okay, next video was new houseplant load at the garden center. I got a call from my mom and she was like, the plants are here. You want to come down? So they arrived the afternoon, like late in the afternoon, the day before I was there, and which was nice because they were able to get them off the plant racks on the ground, kind of sorted, priced. Um, none of them come pre-priced. Aaron's going to open the door. Are you opening it? It's kind of hot in here. So yeah, I told her that I would be there as soon as I could the next morning and it was just a fun day. I learned a lot about different types that I hadn't seen before. There were some really neat ones. In fact, I went back and I picked up two more that I'll show you. Look at this. This one is a Burl Marks Variegated Philodendron. I meant to pick one of these up that day, and I just, I was so overwhelmed with the amount of plants uh, that I forgot. So I went back and got one of those, and I got the uh, Pothos Cebu Blue, which I think has got the most gorgeous color kind of an icy silvery green it's so pretty so anyway oh and I got <laughs> I got two crocodile ferns too and those are on our mantle at the moment Katie said do you know if starting houseplants from seed is a thing have you ever tried I the only thing I have started from seed that's a house plant in our area are cacti uh, I'm sure it is it's probably a thing, but I think a lot of them are propagated, you know, leaf propagation and tissue culture and things like that. Um, and I don't, I'm not well versed enough in the houseplant realm to really know a really good answer to that question. Donna said, have you ever had a Venus flytrap? And has Andrews ever sold them? 
As a matter of fact, I do have one right here. I just picked this up at um, one of the grocery stores in town, not Albertsons, it was Waremarked. Uh, my mom's sister and I went down there uh, to grab some, my sister was looking for some kind of specialty chili paste or something. Anyway, um, we went down there and they had a big display of these right in the doorway. And it's been a while since Andrews has had them. Uh, they do carry them from time to time, but they never arrive looking this nice. And the kids have been searching for flies to feed it, which is so fun. And it's just so nice looking and it's formed two new little leaves since we brought it home. It's been a while since we've had it, but we ended up moving it out here because they do kind of want brighter light. It's very humid in here, so I think it's going to really thrive. Judith said, my house is on the dark side. Is there a certain plant I should give a try? Yes, ZZ plants, so they saw the kind of black ones uh, that they had down at the garden center. Those are really cool, or just the bright green ones. Um, those are probably one of the most forgiving plants I've ever grown. Uh, peace lilies do fairly well with dark light. Sansevierias do really well with dark light. Uh, if you're wanting something on the succulent side of things, Haworthias are surprisingly low light tolerant. Delane said, I, or Delaney said, I have always heard that ficus were fussy plants that didn't like to be moved. Is that true? Somewhat. I think that the, the traditional is that ficus benjam, benjamina, something like that. That one hasn't been too fussy for me. Um, our fig hasn't been too, not too fussy. The triangularis that was in that video, I don't know. Like they were already kind of dropping some leaves. So I have experienced that with some of them. But oh, and then uh, we've got the ficus. It's the Klingon, Klingon Anastasia and Klingon. It's a white and green variegated one that were shipped to us. Uh, they were proven winners leaf joy plants and they haven't dropped any leaves. I mean, so they went through the whole shipping process and made it here, made it through repotting. And here comes Russell and they haven't uh, dropped leaves. Leslie said, what is the brand of the beautiful brown urns with handles I keep seeing? I don't know. Um, they got those at a show, I think, one of their buying shows, and they didn't have a tag. They didn't have a, a brand tag when I bought my the two that I have. Um, I do know that they have shipped quite a number of those, so if you see anything that interests you, you can email them um, or call down and ask for Robin, and they're usually real good to help you out there. Uh, Christina said, is your sister's name Monica or Monicus? I <laughs> saw so you type it that way in another post. Monicus is my nickname for Monica. It's been that way for ever. You say it really quickly, though, too. Monicus. 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 Yeah, except for on, like, gifts, I type out, or I write out Monicus with, like, ten <laughs> S's yeah. after it. Um, so it is Monica, but Monicus is just, yeah. She did say that most everyone's calling her that now, Monicus. She, she loves it. <laughs> Uh, Bloom Chirp said, I'm heading to the garden center tomorrow, so made a big plant list to look for. Thank you for showing. Oh, <gasps> Russell. I mean, you'd be knocking down my plants. Uh, thank you for showing so many varieties of beautiful plants. Question, you always repot your plants when you get them home. Is it bad to keep them in their nursery pots? No. And I know some people would recommend that you don't repot them right away. Like, let do things in small steps, you know, because they're being moved from one location to like a car and then they have to go through the, the walk from the car to the house and this time of year it's cold uh, and then they have to get used to a new environment so doing a repot on top of all that can maybe pose a little bit more threat for shock for the plant um, so they, yeah there's some people who just say give it two weeks let the plant just sit there for two weeks in its pot and I think they could stay in their nursery pot indefinitely as long as they're not outgrowing it. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any problem with that at all. In fact, the crocodile ferns that I brought home, I didn't repot. I just slipped them down into some decorative pots on our mantle because they don't need a repot at the moment. Hannah said, how are all the plants watered at Andrews? Does someone just go around every so often to check the soil and water a little, uh, letting the excess drain into a saucer? It always amazes me how nice the plants look uh, at a lot of the garden centers with so many to take care of. So they have, we actually bought it when I was in charge of the houseplants down there. It's called Tanks A Lot, and it's this like little cart with a pressurized water tank that's hooked up to their RO system. So um, they hook it up at night, and it fills up the tank. It's not enough to water all of those plants. I actually recommend that they buy one of those fabric hoses that we have in the Hartley. Oh, yeah. Because if you did it early enough in the morning, which I would have, wish I would have known about it when I worked down there, you just take the, kind of like this jumble of hose and just walk it around all of the the um, displays and then um, water everything kind of like backwards back toward the water source those fabric hoses are so lightweight and they don't like they don't 
I don't know, they don't tip things over. Sure. They're just really easy to manipulate and maneuver around or with, maneuver around with. And I don't know if they're doing it that way, but I felt like if I could have done that first thing in the morning and just like had a, a water source that never ended yeah. and made it through all the displays, oh, I should have thought of that back then. Uh, because I think that they do a lot of like, I see them walking around with like a lot of little bottles, like the bottom of spray bottles. Oh. I'm like, oh, that doesn't seem efficient at all um, or watering cans but they they make it happen there's like three people who take care of the house plants down there i know monica does it one day uh, dana does it like three days and then i think Brittany does it a couple of days or maybe i don't know anyway it's kind of a joint effort down there next video is pruning and out of control wisteria and making wreaths from the branches plus house plant repotting so i did do some house plant repotting uh, with the initial plants that i got that day at the garden center um, the wisteria vine is planted on an arbor and it was planted at a time where it made a lot more sense to have the plant there but that whole space has evolved so much my intention was to have it go up one side of the arbor and then over on top of the tool shed and kind of uh, like have blooms draping down over the front of the tool shed and then you know we got rid of the tool shed and pretty much everything in that area but the wisteria stayed because we still have the pallet walkway still there uh, i need to retool that at this point and figure out what i want to do there uh, but it was just not the right time of year to plant the wist or to prune the wisteria, uh, but I needed to get rid of the overgrowth. It was just out of control, and it looks so much better now. And then the branches were so long and they're so flexible that it was made for perfect a perfect material to make some twig wreaths. Mona said, "How old is that wisteria? How long did it take to grow to that size?" I probably planted that the second year we were here. Maybe do you think? So it was like 2017, it's probably five or six years old, right around in there. Bob Schmidt said, could you have forced those wisteria to bloom inside? I don't think so. I don't think they would have gone all the way to bloom stage. Daymoon Farm said, have you considered training the wisteria into a tree form? I see them grown as trees all over the south. That would be an interesting project. If we removed the arbor and just kind of trimmed it, trimmed it all down to that main trunk mm -hmm. and tried to keep it as a tree form. It is a... Do you want it right there? I don't know. It's a wisteria floribunda. It's a Japanese type wisteria that's that's a termed an invasive, invasive type. They grow very rapidly. I think... If I was to do a tree form, I'd probably go with the American wisteria, which is a wisteria frutescens, which I said that wrong in the video. We had to put a little mm. asterisk there to correct me, but uh, I, that one doesn't grow as aggressively and it doesn't want to pop up everywhere. This one doesn't for us. And I think a lot of things that are termed invasive are not that way here because we just don't have the rainfall that other places have. Like we don't have conditions that are conducive to things taking over. Normally, unless it's like puncture vine, that'll take over real fast. Yeah, I don't even think, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think anything invasive here could blow away or even be taken by an animal. Hi, I know. Don't smack my shirt, please. I don't think there's anywhere close enough that, uh, that gets consistent rainfall to yeah. where any, anything invasive One of the stuff that is grow. invasive here, like puncture vine, you know how you kill it? You give it extra water. Oh, yeah, right. Like, that's how you kill our invasive stuff. Right. You just have to give it more Yeah, because everything invasive here doesn't want water. Right. Yeah. Uh, Chrissy said, do you trust the weather forecast? Pretty close. I mean, we watch the, we watch the weather like crazy. Yeah. Um, I don't trust the zoning system, but I trust the, <laughs> the forecast system. Athena said, where do you get the copper plant tags? Those are super nice for houseplants versus the white tags. I don't know what brand they are. I want to say they were on the same rack with like the luster leaf tags. I can kind of see that brand name. Came in a little plastic, like little plastic sack kind of deal. Maybe we can find some. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Terry said, have you cut back your grapevines yet? I need help. I have not, but I do plan on doing that here fairly soon-ish. I'll show you when I do. Terry Paul said, when does a wisteria start blooming after planting? I'm training mine into a, my vine into a tree. This will be its third year. Well, I mean, I'd be careful about when you're pruning it. Typically, you want to prune them immediately after they're done blooming because they bloom on uh, old wood. They're going to set the buds for their next year blooms on last year's growth. That makes sense. Um, so you want to make sure that you're not cutting them too late in the season because you'll cut blooms off. I've also heard things like, and I don't know if this is true, like an old wives' tale, but like if you plant it too low, they won't ever bloom for you. Have you so heard like that? So like if you plant too low, it won't grow? Possibly. But if you plant it high, it won't die. 
like that? Sort of. <laughs> that would make sense, right? <laughs> anyway, I would assume, depending on how old it was when you bought it, I would assume that you would have seen blooms by now. But you know what? First year they sleep, second year they creep, third year they leap. So let's see what it does this year. We're just going through all We're the sayings. We're just all the yeah. sayings. Yep. <laughs> Cindy said, as the branches dry out, will pieces of the wreath loosen, or does the drying hold them in place even better? For me, I find that they dry in place even better. Branches like that don't, um, they don't seem to desiccate all that much. Uh, the greens, like when I do evergreen wreaths and I'm using wire, they seem to shrivel up a little bit more because you're dealing with a lot of needles and stuff like that that desiccate more. But when you're dealing strictly with branches and there aren't any leaves or needles on them, I just don't find that I have any issue with that. And the next video is planting hyssop seeds, propagating tradescantia, and flower bed cleanup. So I planted some anise hyssop, which uh, I got a whole bunch going. I need to check the tray today for water. I don't have any germination yet. It's only It hasn't even been a week yet. You know, I thought it was Anna's hyssop, like Anna banana. Anna's hyssop? Anna's hyssop. Is, that's what you thought I was saying? Yeah. Oh. I, because I edited that video and I typed in Anna's hyssop and the correct thing came up and uh -huh. I was like, oh, Anna's. That's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I heard one person say like Anise hyssop. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Yeah. Um, I have some out in the garden already. It's by that little uh, like kind of country girl statue that you got me for Christmas mm -hmm. one year, one of our first years we were married. And it's absolutely beautiful, but I want to amp up the amount that I have because it is so long blooming. It blooms for months in the year. It always looks good. It attracts pollinators like crazy. I like the smell of it and you can use it medicinally. I think the flowers are edible too. Um, like you can use them in an edible like salad decorating sort of situation. Uh, so I thought that would be a really fun one to have more of. And I've never started hyssop seeds before. So this is a first for me. I've only ever bought it from plants. Um, then we went into the Hartley. We propagated the Tradescantia that I've got in there. So one plant ended up becoming two pots full of plants. Super easy to do. And then we went out and cleaned up some flower bed. And I've just been plugging away like an hour or two at a time over the past week. And it's just so nice I love it so much and you know I've talked about I think I even talked about in this one I am you know raking leaves and things that's another thing that you'll hear a lot of people talking about in terms of when you should be doing your cleanup and beneficials and how you're getting rid of their habitat and all of that um, but we did a video was it a dedicated video Aaron remember when I sat down and talked about like the pros and cons of um, fall versus spring cleanup in the garden yeah I think we did have a dedicated video. Maybe we'll link that down below. I don't think it was dedicated. I think you just, you spent, you dedicated a portion of the video. It was the I don't beginning think it was of like it. titled necessarily sure. that. It was at the beginning <clears throat> of a video though. So I don't think it would take long to find. Yeah. Because I remember I was wanting you to be like, just talk about this one thing. And you were like, nah, I want to do other stuff in the video. <laughs> yeah. Well, I never know. Like, do I show the whole day of projects or do I just like keep it, everything short. I don't know. Anyway, um, so the one benefit of cleaning out now, and like I mentioned before, our plants have never been adver adversely affected from doing that, uh, but w because we've had such a thrip problem, if you are leaving a bunch of habitat for beneficials, which is a great thing, but you're also leaving habitat for bad ones too. So you have to weigh you know, do I want to clean out a lot of the bad bugs while maybe getting rid of some of the good ones as well and not have to spray anything this year? I mean, I feel like that's a huge pro. Um, and especially when we've been dealing with that specific problem with the thrips, I think it's a good idea. But anyway, it's, that's another case of do what you want to do. And I'm not, <laughs> I would never judge anybody for it. And do what works for your schedule and however it give, brings you joy. Do it that way. Carol said, do you ever shake your echinacea seed heads before you clear them out? I did that day. <laughs> I uh, grabbed one of the tops of the echinacea and just sprinkled around that area because I checked. I checked to see, are these too soggy? Are they dried out? Like, what, how did these look? And then I, I spread them. Pam said, cell trays, those look super sturdy. Where are you purchasing? Those are the seed starting kits. I can't remember what they called them, but they're from Gardener Supply. They're a 24 cell count tray, and I do use those quite a lot. Love and Gardening said, my daughters and I love learning from you. When you say cut the Arctic Fire dogwoods back every other year, how far do you cut them back? Like an inch from the ground or six inches? Either. In that range. It's not going to matter either way. Terry said, I always enjoy cleanup videos. What do Paul and Bethany do this time of year? Well, yesterday, and we'll have, they threw a camera up so you guys could watch. 
They cleared out the entire back section of the barn. We, just, we decided to use the new red barn as storage for now, and uh, we need to clean up the back of the barn area so that Chad's gonna come in and kind of level it up, put new gravel down so we can reorganize and have a cover sort of situation mm -hmm. built off the back of the barn so we have a place to park gators instead of just like out. That way it's going to open up our two bays here so we can park our cars in the barn and not leave them outside and have snow on top of them and all that. So we're just kind of getting ready for that. So that's the kind of projects they work on or they're in here organizing, cleaning tools. Um, they're also quite handy. Like last winter they did beautiful molding in our bedroom. Mm -hmm. um, they were up there for quite a long time painted. They do painting. Um, they grew up like their dad was a like that was his business. Oh. They did he did painting and so they are real good at that. Um, they're just like all over the place doing all kinds of stuff. Less this time Less of year. Less this time of year, but they keep themselves busy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We don't lay them off. No. We give them the freedom too. Like if you don't want to come in today because it's really crappy, you still have a job. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just do what works for your schedule here. Wonder Wonder said, are the Falcos right-handed and left-handed? There are different ones. Is it the Falco 9s that are left-handed? I think it was a Falco 9. S six are the six. smaller one. Okay. The 2s are the ones I use. 14? No. No. I think it's a Falco 9. I think that's okay. what my mom has because she's left-handed. Yeah. Vicki said, it doesn't look like you have heat mats under your seedlings. Is that not needed? Not necessarily. If you've got them in a room that's... This room stays, what, 70? And it's very humid in here right now. <sighs> Yeah, I, I don't understand this room, actually, because I have the thermostat set to, like, 60. Mm -hmm. It is not 60 degrees. No, it's warm in here. It is warm. I, so, like, I don't know if the plants are putting off heat or... The grow lights. They're not hot, though. I mean, yeah. these are LEDs. I can put my hands on them. They're, like, this warm. This room but... specifically, I don't know what they insulated it with, but, like, in the summer, it stays... It's cold. It's cold. And we don't even have the thing on very much yeah it just is like a really well insulated space yeah i don't know you can use heat mats it will speed up germination but in this situation it's just not needed i don't feel like i can wait the extra couple of days um to have them germinate sandra Bar bradbury said i got out in my garden oh i do use them when i start stuff out in the greenhouse because there's a much larger fluctuation of temperature and i got one of the big like the big 48 inch by two feet um, I've got a couple of those so I can line flats up when I start snapdragons and things like that, which I don't think I'm going to do a huge amount of. The snapdragons and the roses were two, and dahlias were our th three biggest thrip carriers mm. last year. And like you'd open a snapdragon flower and you could just see thrips inside the flower. It's like a little cozy little home for them. So I wonder if I should even grow any at all this year. Maybe not. Just take a year off? Maybe. I don't, I don't know if I can do that though. They're so pretty. Are you talking about the ones that you have on the the hog panels? No, the oh. sweet peas. I hate those. <laughs> yeah. They're just, it's the worst plant. And the, the hog panels make everything look bad I know. As those well. are going because I'm doing something really? else there, yes. But I will probably grow a few sweet peas, but I'm going to grow them Hopefully on TVs. Hopefully we be closer to the house so we can see them more. Such attitude. They're so straggly. They are so fragrant. Well... You know what I need oh. to do? I think I need to give them more space. Maybe. I'm going to change your mind on those. I, okay? You can't that's, nope, because that's they're brown on the end. Goal for 2024. They're brown. It's like they grow up and there's like a little bit of green at the bottom and then just brown at the top. It's brown at the bottom and green on the top. Oh, well, whichever way it is, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to change his mind this year. That's the goal. Uh, Sandra said, I got out my garden yesterday and plan on today also. I'm so looking forward to spring. I'm winter sowing for the first time ever. Some are already coming up. That's so exciting. Well, I have to plant them in bigger pots in a month or so, bachelor buttons being one that is up. Bachelor buttons are a cool season crop. So um, the goal for winter sowing is to be able to pop them right out of their container into the garden. So it's going to kind of depend on your climate nothing in our winter sowing is is going yet and i think it kind of happens at the schedule a little bit ahead of the schedule that it would do outside if that makes sense mm -hmm. um, because you've got just that little bit of heat trapped around those seeds so i don't know if i would probably plan on putting them in the ground and then maybe putting some hoops over them um, to protect them if it, if it gets colder but they're surprisingly they're tough plants Definitely, though, before you plant them out, lift that lid off and acclimate them and then pop, pop the lid back on them for a night or two and just kind of like gradually 
elongate the time you're exposing them. If it's a colder part of the year, but one of the benefits of winter sowing is not having to harden your seedlings off. But I think there's some element of a little bit of hardening off because they're not 100% used to outside, even though they are outside because they've got a protector right. over them. So I think it, it's beneficial to a couple days at least. Like give them protection at night and pop open the lid during the day so they can just kind of get used to it a little bit. Marcy said, I've never trimmed my perennial geraniums. Would they benefit from that? They are a tight, beautiful ground cover around my zellias. If they are a tight, beautiful ground cover, I wouldn't mess with them. Perennial geraniums, a lot of them are an evergreen. Like ours, a lot of ours still look really good. So the only cutback I will do is just anything that looks bad. Any tattered leaves or damaged leaves I'll take off, but I don't do a full cutback on all of our geraniums. Linda Jones said, somewhat off topic, what are the dimensions of the greenhouse you're sowing your hyssop seeds in? Is heating it very expensive? So that is 30 by 26, the greenhouse. And it's hard to tell because it's all connected. Yeah, I would like, guess. <clears throat> so it is, it's very expensive actually. I would guess, well, depending on what, I guess a lot of things. But I would guess it's somewhere between two and $300 a month. To heat just it, that greenhouse. Just that greenhouse alone. At the heat that we keep it at. Yeah, I guess. and I think that I think it's very inefficient. The, the yeah, I think it the is model, super inefficient. I think the model of unit that we got is too big for that space. I think having a model that you know was on more often but at a lower mm -hmm. rate, and I also think that those roll up sides. Yeah, there's gaps everywhere. <clears throat> there's I mean, gaps it's, everywhere, it's and I think that we could do a way heat. better job of sealing all those up yeah. and. Like you like to keep it open because you want the cats to be able we to keep get up in. One, we tape three of the flaps down. The third, the fourth one we leave open because I have to have a warm place for the cats Animals to Animals were meant to live outside. And so in my mind, I'm like, seal the whole thing up. They don't need to be in the greenhouse. I get it. I if can't. you want to, it's I, totally fine. I, can't, I don't feel like a responsible pet owner. I but mean. I would wager that that is maybe even like as much as $100 a month to keep one of those flaps. Worth it. Open. Yeah, That's and if worth it's worth it, it to cats. you, then, mm -hmm. you know. But it just is. so people know, like, if you're asking the question, yeah. that's probably when that's I knew, my best guess. When I knew that those negative degree temperature nights were coming, um, I went in there with a roll of duct tape, <laughs> like, taped up any hole I could find. I made a little, um, like, you know those things at the bottom of the doors? Yeah, the little... Like, little flat, flat right. things. I made one out of duct tape. Because I thought, if I could just seal up anything yeah. that's leaking out heat, it's going to be helpful. Um, and I don't know if it was, but it made me feel better about it. But yeah, it's like super inefficient structure. It wasn't, I don't know. It just, with the, the, the sides that were framed in, mm -hmm. I mean, it was just like a freestanding frame with the cold frame butted up to it, sort of. There's yeah. a gap. So yeah, it's not like it's I connected think we could do to a lot the, better. Yeah, we could I do think a lot if better. you, I think you, a person could build it much more efficient than yeah. the way we have it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, next video, this is the last one, was placing big concrete pots and more flower bed cleanup. So the four pots from Unique Stone that we got for the brick patio, when we picked them up, it was a snow floor, so we couldn't see anything, and it really wasn't worth <clears throat> unboxing them and trying to place them. I mean, you couldn't really place them. Uh, or C, get the feel for the space if the brick wasn't exposed. So we did that, and because you could see everything, most of our snow is gone, except for any of the bigger piles that we had kind of like scraped up. And then I went out and did more flower bed cleanup. So Angie said, is there a reason why the pots haven't been sat on concrete pad? I'd be concerned about your pots clogging. Yeah, they definitely could clog sitting right there on the soil. I kind of like to place things though, make sure I like them there, live with it for a little while. We'll probably have a little brick pad belt under them yeah. I'm guessing like we did with the ones on the east side east fence line uh, once we decide like yes this is exactly the spot we've got to get all the boxwoods in though and really I should um I should ask Pedro if he could do that actually it'd be kind of cool if he could make a circle one would that be you they, couldn't really do that with bricks they could cut them but I I don't know well, just a square pad would be fine. Yeah. Just a little small pedestal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A natural Living said, are there certain guidelines you follow when trimming back plants that are dormant in the winter? I have a bunch of plants that need cutting back, but I've always worried that I'll damage the plant if I don't wait until spring. I would love to know what you, what you follow. Do I follow anything specific? No, I just do it when it works for me. Uh, I, I mean, I know if we got a deep freeze, like if we got a really cold like front that came through and brought in negative temperatures again... It's possible that some plants could be damaged. 
Um, I just have been doing it for so long. Um, just however, it's my approach is a little willy nilly and I feel I find fr freedom in that. I don't like to follow any kind of set thing. Um, and so I don't know, I've just, it's always kind of worked out. But there is risk, I think. If you expose the, the crown or the, you know, of the plant and you get rid of it, it's kind of um, insulating. If you live in an area that you could get snow or really cold uh, temperatures coming your way, it's one of those things you just gotta kind of weigh out what makes the most amount of sense to you. For me, if doing it when I have time uh, is much less stressful and maybe losing one or two plants, possibly, that rarely happens, but for, due to winter, it usually happens due to drip issues yeah that's where we lose stuff um but yeah it's it's l much less expensive and much less stressful to do it now for me and have to replace one or two plants than it is to wait until we are flying busy to have to do the cleanup and that's how it was when i was down at the garden center that's when i started just taking kind of a more relaxed approach to the whole thing because i ha i couldn't i couldn't do it in the spring we were so busy down at the garden center and i was working all kinds of hours weekends too like I worked a lot yeah. down there and um, I just simply didn't have time to do it in the spring. So I had to do it another time. Also, you mentioned spraying fruit, your fruit trees. Can you share when you prune the trees and what you use to spray them? I sprayed yesterday, so I did film it. And that probably be out by the time this one's out. And I have not pruned them yet. I will bring you along for that. I don't have to do much pruning this year though because I took after them pretty hard last year. So I'll just have to do a little thinning, I think. Nothing major. Chris said, what do you call the collapsible trash bag you use and where can I get one? It's a Fiskars product. It's a kangaroo pop-up bag mm -hmm. with the hard shell bottom. Like I wouldn't mess around with getting the one that has the soft bottom. I know it's less expensive, but the hard bottom, you get so much more life out of those pop-up bags with that bottom. And we tend to, because they're quite large, you can get them smaller size than I have. But when you have a large bag, I tend to like fill it and then overfill it. it it gets too heavy with that hard shell bottom you can just drag it on gravel grass mulch whatever and it just like flies across the ground and gets to where you need it to go i've been trying to be better about like i test the weight i'm like let me just go dump it in the gator quick yeah. before it gets to be too much for me christy said when should i start be starting my ranunculus corms it'll depend on your area and it'll de depend on if you're going to pre-sprout them or not the pre-sprouting process uh, usually takes a couple of weeks. Um, that way you can get them rooting quicker and then get them out in the ground. I would say that we probably put ours out sometime in April. We plant them out. Last year I started a bunch in the greenhouse and I because I wanted to have plants that are a little further along. I didn't feel like it was worth it because I struggled with aphids and I didn't I don't want to do that knowing that they are prone to that insect, especially in a greenhouse insect pressure can be a little bit more intense. Um, and it didn't buy me that much time, I felt. I felt like next year I'll pre-sprout them and then just plant the corn, or this year I'll pre-sprout them so that they've got roots going, but then I'll pop them straight out into the soil. And we might uh, tent them for a little while. In that case, you can plant them out a little earlier, but they can go out typically before your last, before your last frost. Um, you don't want it to be super cold, but, uh, and you don't want the corms to be exposed to two, like a deep freeze, which is 28 degrees or lower. Um, or they can rot. That was a lot of like jumbled information. I'm sorry, I'm kind of all over the place because I haven't thought about it really since last year. I'm a little like, ooh, about this year's garden. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, coming or going this, this year. We'll see what ends up happening out there. Argo said, still a bit early here in Southern Ontario for spring cleanup, but appreciate your inspiration. What happens if you leave or don't cut back your ornamental grass? I'm looking to maximize spread and have always cut back the grasses. Given the current slow spread, I'm wondering if leaving them alone for a few seasons will help or hurt. I don't think it's a good idea to leave them the old dead growth on. I think that will uh, make your plant too thick. It can kind of strangle. It won't come back. What's that? It won't come back. Right. It's done. There are people who do the chop and drop thing, and that might be helpful. I mean, they they um, like cut off little layers of the grass and just let it go to the ground and kind of create a mat on the ground. Mm. A little bit and in that case if you're cutting off seed heads it might help spread some seed around so that you can get some more sprouting up around your grass but I wouldn't leave the the tops on I would cut it back lion Hawaii said what is the awesome music you're playing when you are placing the large unique unique stone pots did you edit that one no Ken did Ken did so I don't know awesome music yeah maestro said this year I want to try some dwarf grasses do you have some ideas 
blue fescue. Oh, jeez, not blue fescue. There's tons of beautiful Carex. Um, if you've got a, a shadier situation, Acarus is awesome, Acarus Ogon. Um, that's spelled A-C-O-R-U-S, and then the variety is O-G-O-N, Ogon. Um, Hakana Kloas, which are Japanese forest like grass. Those. those are beautiful. There's Areola, which is like a pink, green, yellow, and then there's an all gold, and then there's one that's a little bit more green. Um, I'm trying to think of sunny, sunny grasses that stay really small. I love blue fescue. I think it's beautiful. It just looks dead. Looks like it's trying to die. Well, that stuff did because it didn't have proper irrigation. Oh, well, yeah, maybe maybe mm-hmm. that was the problem. Yeah, there's beautiful ones though. Um, if you're wanting, I'm not sure like how small you're thinking for dwarf grasses, but um, there's some penicetums like Carly Rose. It doesn't get super big, and Hamelm. I don't know if that's how you say it, but they're beautiful and they, you know, they're more like this high, a couple feet, which in my mind isn't super big. That seems more dwarf than like your totem pole, which is like eight feet tall. Um, yeah. And last question. Geno very yonder said, love the look. How does the drip line not get pinched from the pot sitting on it? Uh, it probably is right now. Well, probably not because the soil is so soft under there. When we actually get ready to plant them, at that point, hopefully we'll have some sort of a brick situation going on under them. And then we use a, an angle grinder and grind out a, a channel through the bricks so that the drip line can just easily go through. I can just through. have Pedro create an actual, a uh, uh, in the center, just create a little, uh, like real small drip tube uh-huh. that we can run the quarter inch through. Sure. Either way, we'll figure out a way. The uh, east platforms, east fence line platforms for those pots. We did the angle grinder and did the channel out and that's worked great. We've never had one that's been pinched. And you guys, that is it for today's recap video. Boy, last week without you here, I felt like, well, there was no one to chat with. Like it was just me and the camera. It's so lonely. Argue about blue fescue with. Right. Yeah. It just, it went so fast and I thought this is going to be such a short recap. No one to disagree with your ideas. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> kind of nice. A little refreshing. <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a great week, and we will see you in the next one.